It's Brian Preston, the money guy. Not adjusting your risk profile. Right. This is one, you know, I want to use a football analogy, Bo. Okay. Seems appropriate this time of year. Well, especially, yeah. And, and one of the things, it's, it's boring TV, but there's a reason. I, I completely get it. Is if you got a team that's up by 30 points in the fourth quarter mm-hmm. with less than two minutes, you just know that it's now comes a game of how many timeouts they have. Can we take a knee right. to let the clock just run that's out? That's right. And they just go run the ball because guess what? If you run the ball, you have less likely it's going to be intercepted. You, yep. It's just it's just not as risky as if you drop back in the pocket and throw a big bomb down right, there. Right, right. You don't have to do that. You're up by 30 points. Yep. There's less than two minutes. You just need to run the clock out. Like I said, boring TV, but guess what it gets you? A win get you the w. at the end of the game. You win. because, And that's one of those things that I think coaches, they realize, I've won the game. Why would I do anything? Because there's there are folly examples mm-hmm. where people will do something stupid. And you're like, he had the game won. Why did that coach it make that call? Lose, yep. That was just stupid. He shot himself in the foot and lost. We see this time and time again with people and their personal investments. That's right. I mean, and I'm looking at you entrepreneurs. A lot of you entrepreneurs, you're like, I made millions because I started this company, I started this company. So risk has been your best friend. The volatility and the risk of you might lose money has made you a lot of money. So you now have this respect, you have this relationship, and you're like, why wouldn't I want to keep doing this? The problem is you're probably at the point in your life where you have to understand that there is a risk capacity versus risk tolerance exactly discussion. Right. Bo, walk them through the difference between risk capacity and risk tolerance. Risk tolerance is exactly what it sounds like. It's how much risk can you tolerate. So if you're an entrepreneur or someone who's really comfortable with wild swings in the market or crazy investment ideas, you might have a really high risk tolerance. Yep. Risk capacity is how much risk can your financial situation handle. So even though you might have all the tolerance in the world and you'll never lose any sleep, if you don't have the time or the liquidity or the financial resources to be able to have a large capacity for risk, your financial circumstances might not match your capacity. So you have to understand how you marry those two. One of the big mistakes, you already said it, Brian, is we see folks who only ever operate off of risk tolerance and yeah. never factor in as they age, as their risk profile changes, that they have to take into account the capacity they have for risk as well. Yeah, do you have enough time to recover if That's this right. thing gets its teeth kicked in? Yep. And like I said, why? If you've won the game, why even put that upon yourself? It yep. just doesn't make sense. So here's some maximization techniques that we wanted to share. Know when to slow down. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is one of those things you got to, just like we look up at a scoreboard to know where we are with things, it's perfectly fine to have a retirement analysis done. I just had a a comment come in last night where it was a 40 something year old, saved a ton of money. And he's like, I just don't know if I be saving more, should Mm -hmm. I be saving less? Because I'm personally frustrated. I don't have a million dollars in the account. But then he had all these other great, he just didn't know where he was. He was kind of flopping around. So, Know when to slow down so you can figure out if you got to hit the accelerator, if you got to take your foot off the accelerator, if you got to adjust the risk profile. Exactly. That's pay attention to that. And then set yourself up for success. Um, if you know if you put in the hard work in your younger years, you're going to be in a better place exactly right. as you get in your mid 40s and 50s. And I don't think it, this is a easy way. The, the, the more effort you put in early on, the less hard you have to work later on. If you miss out on those early years when you have time on your side, you got to work really hard to make up that lost time. So put the effort in early. This is one. Um, don't be scared to ask for professional help. Yeah. I look back. You know, I've already told you the story of my in-laws versus my parents. One understood the power of investing. One understood the power of saving, but just never let the army of dollar bills actually do the work for them. I think this is where if you get to a point where your assets have grown to the level that they're so successful, you know, this is a chance of a lifetime. I don't want to screw this up. Mm-hmm. Don't be scared to work with a professional because they can do the, the the stress testing. They can tell you where you are in your journey. There's a lot of value, right. especially as you're getting close to retirement. And then, Bo, you, you, we had on there, know your why. That, that's, you, you mentioned the guy who said, you know, I've, got, I've already saved up all this money. I've hit this financial independence. Now what? Maybe the answer is, okay, yeah, keep saving money. Keep building so that eventually you can leave a legacy for your kids. Or maybe it is... Start spending the money. Go yeah. from a saver to a spender. Take your foot off the accelerator. You have to understand ultimately what is your money a tool to allow you to do? What are the things that are important to you? What's your why behind the decisions you're making? If you can answer that question, you're going to set yourself up for success.